How would one go about creating a wheel spin? Since I already went over a, uh, tank treads in another video. Uh, since then I've actually learned a few new tricks and so I'm going to talk about a couple of those right now. So one thing I created since the tank tread video, I've created a couple of scripts to create tank treads in various ways and control them in lots of ways. Um, but recently I also created a little script that generates tire spin as well as allowing you to uh, loop all sorts of animation that you can create yourself. So uh, this is called my Spin Master control panel and basically you can select any object and in this case I have a model of a tire and basically you just tell it to add driven rotation and instantly it creates a control and it creates a few other attributes on it and when you just translate the control that it creates you can see that it rotates your tire and it rotates it relative to its scale, its placement in space I mean so basically it's rotating it naturally okay or about as natural as a computer generated tire can be so the setup's actually really easy because the tire rotation is actually driven by keyframes a keyframe bit of animation that it generated on the fly. Now, unlike other animation, instead of being driven by the timeline, it's driven by essentially this control and a few nodes plugged in to modulate the speed and other things. And I even have a couple of manual controls so I can scrub it without translating, even change the direction because sometimes we're moving the tire through space. If you rotate around from, let's say, 90 degrees and head start heading along the x-axis, then the rotation may not respond correctly because the direction has changed. Um, and that's because Maya is always co very conscious of which direction things are facing. Um, so in this tool, I also have uh, the ability to add other axes to it so that if I want it to, I can select the control and come in and I can tell it that I want to rotate instead of on instead of translating along the Z axis, it's going to translate on the X and then it'll basically rotate relative to that movement through space. And that's just a matter of basically telling it to pay attention to the translation in that direction. It's pretty simple. So in other setups I've used things like expressions and utility nodes to basically drive the main rotation or movement of a uh, tire or a tread but uh, I'm going to show you basically the noodle trick that I learned uh, basically at work so instead of using those things I'm going to use just simple animation but usually when it comes to setting up something like this or setting up any rig I like to create sort of a, a separate object to basically drive things in case I need to replace the geometry for some reason uh, so, um, just to make it a bit more visual, uh, I'm going to throw a locator in here, just so you can see where things are happening. Uh, so I'm going to create a locator, and I'm going to snap my locator to the center of my tire, which is right there. Okay, so let's say that's going to be my pivot point. Okay, and for now I'll just constrain my tire to my locator. So I'm going to animation menus, constrain, and I'll do a parent constrain, and I'll maintain offset even though they're perfectly aligned. So now when I grab my locator, when I move it through space, you can see it's dragging the tire behind it. When I rotate it, it'll rotate the tire. Okay. So you could use a group or joints or whatever you want it to to drive your tire. Uh, if you want to, you could even apply it directly to the tire. But like I said, uh, better safe than sorry. Usually you want to apply it to something else and then have the tire follow that so that in case you need to update the geometry or place it, you can do so without having to recreate your rig. So I'm just going to call, I'm just going to rename this to something more specific. So I'll call it loc, loc axes for locator axes. And so now I'm just going to take, uh, bring up my timeline. And at frame one, I'm going to set a key. 
And instead of setting keys on all of my attributes, I'm just going to set keys on just the ones I need. For one, it'll make it a little easier to uh, focus on things when I'm doing cleanup. Also, it requires less uh, processing time and less effort on cleanup when it comes to fixing things later, so on and so forth. Now, the trick here, the only trick to this setup, is that you need to actually calculate the surface of your tire. Okay? So a little bit of math. And there's a couple ways to make it, make it easy on you. All you have to do is select your tire, go to your attribute editor, and then under display, go all the way down to object display, and then find the bounding box information window. Expand that. Okay. So now when you're bounding box information window, we're going to get a couple of rows of values here, the minimum and the maximum value. Now we need to actually find the essentially the diameter, which is basically the height of our tire from top to bottom. Okay? And the simplest way to do that is to subtract the minimum value from the maximum value. Now it's fairly simple in this case, and it's going to be basically x, y, z. We always want to subtract the y from the y. Okay, so always the second value, one right there in the middle. In this case, our maximum value is 2, and our minimum value is basically 0. So that means our diameter is 2. And so then you need to multiply the diameter times pi. Pi 3.1 blah blah blah. 3.14 should be plenty enough. So just multiply 2 times 3.14. And that's basically going to be kind of around the value you want to use. You can go probably a couple more decimals if you want if you get more, a little more precise with it. But it's going to be around 6.5 is going to be the area around our tire more or less. It's actually somewhere around there. Uh, usually as long as you're close it's good and you can always test it and tweak the values later. So what you need to do is select your pivot point for your tire that you're animating and then you want to find the frame that comes as close to the value that you're coming up with. So I'm going to say, so I started at frame 1 so I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, more or less 7 frames away from it. And at that 7th frame I need to rotate the tire 360 degrees and then key it. Okay, so that should be an average rotation for a tire from basically one, from uh, basically zero to 360. Okay, simple. Okay, so now that we have the circumference of our tire, what we need now is we need to basically tweak the animation curve that we created. So simply bring up your graph editor by going to Window, Animation Editor's Graph Editor, or you can just click on the Perspective Graph button in your toolbar. All right, which kind of looks like that one right there. Okay, so once you have your animation curve up, you hang your graph editor up. You want to select the rotate X, which is the axis I created my keyframes on. And then while you're mousing over the graph editor area, this little grid here, press A so you can basically expand out and see your entire curve. Okay, and so we got two keyframes one at zero and one at eight. Okay, so we want to select both ends. Of the curve, and we want to change our we want to change our animation's uh, tangent so it's basically linear. And this is so that we don't get any ease in or ease out or acceleration on opposite ends of the curve. We want it to basically move to rotate consistently at the same speed from one end to the other. This way, we can get a nice even loop. And speaking of loop, in order to actually get this to loop, and we want it to loop infinitely. Under curves, we can go to pre-infinity and tell it to cycle. 
and then under curves you go to post infinity and tell it to cycle and we don't really need to see what that looks like but under view if you want to actually see it you can tell it to show infinity and you can see that it's actually cycling that rotation so it's going from 0 to 360 and then it'll snap right back to 0 and go 360 again 0 360 over and over and over and over again okay simple so it's cycling that uh, optionally you could also do post infinity you can do cycle with offset and this way you just get a constant line and cycle with offset okay so either one of these should work for the tire but basically you get a nice infinite curve so whether you're going in reverse or forward it'll always move 360 degrees relative to the size that you created it at there are ways to adjust for that as well uh, but that's a little more complicated Okay, so right now if we scrub our timeline and go past where we created our animation, you can see that our tire is actually spinning infinitely. Okay, and it works in both directions. So now what we need to do is we need to actually create a control so that we can actually have the influence of that rotation taken away from the timeline. So I'm just going to create a control, create nerves curve, and let's make a circle. And I'll leave the circle on the ground. Why not? I'm going to delete history on it, and I'll just call this my drive control. And just for the sake of keeping things simple, I need to make sure that the tire is going to follow my curve. So I'm just going to group my pivot point. And I'm going to take that group and I'm just going to parent it directly to my control curve. And this is so that I still leave my locator free for further manipulation if I want to uh, change the animation or do something else to it. But now basically I have the tire following my control. So now what I need to do now is need to have that control drive the animation. So with that control selected, I'm going to go to Window, General Editors, connection editor and find the translate Z which corresponds with the axes along which the tire is facing okay and so now I need to bring up my animation and so you need to actually select that animation curve now that can be a little tricky um, but all you have to do is open up your outliner so that's under window an outliner or you can again click on the toolbar button outliner slash perspective and it'll bring up the window the little panel layout button here uh, and then under display disable DAG objects only so that you can see every kind of node and object that's being created in Maya or generated by Maya and you want to find the object that corresponds to the name of the object that you keyframed and the attribute you keyframed and that actually is an animation curve you can actually tell it you can see that little graph with curves on it okay so that's representative of an animation curve and you can select that curve and then you can just reload it into the right side of your, your connection editor uh, basically you want to make sure outputs is on the left and then from and to and on the to side you want the inputs so output is going to be the translate Z and we're going to feed that into the input of our curve and so now that curve is now completely disconnected from the timeline if I scrub the timeline you'll actually see it no longer responds to time and if I come down and I translate my curve you now see that our tire is rotating relative to the translation of that curve and it's doing so at the correct speed and of course if you think the speed is a little off you can always go back in and tweak the animation curve and so that's basically how you create basically object driven rotation on a tire 
using an animation curve. 